So, what is up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel once again. You know, I appreciate having you here. Stick around for today's video. It's all about this. The brand new 750 Trans Out from Honda. I've been down to Doble's Motorcycles down in Causton, and while they weren't looking, I stole it. I didn't. They did let me have it. I saw the general manager, Ian, and he gave me the keys and he said, here you go, fish. Go and have a little bit of a play on that. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of road riding. We're going to have a, a look round and then we're going to attempt to take it off road. It has just started raining, so we'll see how it goes. So stick around for this one. There may be some green lane in, there may be some off road in, but we're definitely going to have some fun on this, the Honda Trans Out 750. Let's get all of the formalities out of the way before we dip in and get some fun. Right, so let's start with me, Mr. Fish. Welcome to the channel. If you haven't been here before, make sure you subscribe. You know you want to. I am currently, I say currently because we shrink over time, six foot two, wide in the shoulders, long in the legs, 16 stone. Well, I'm not 16 stone, actually. I'm 15 stone eight. I've lost a bit more weight, you see. So that'll make the bike a bit faster. But it's not a sports bike, remember that. It's an ADV bike. Right, so while we're stuck at the lights, thank you very much to Doble's Motorcycles down in Coulston. Really appreciate it. I shall leave a link to their website downstairs in the descriptions box and also a link to this bike as well from Honda Motorcycles. So go and check them out. If you are in the area, pop in, say hello to Ian, the general manager, and give him some love. So we're sitting on a dual carriageway, average speed cameras are 40 miles an hour. And I've got to say at 40 miles an hour, I'm in fourth gear, we're only touching about 3,000, just over 3,500 revs. Let's go up to fifth. And it's quite decent, the wind protection is quite good. Okay, we're not going fast, granted, we're not going fast. But it's good, I can feel it on the inside of my arms, but not too much on the crash helmet or on the chest. It's doing a good job considering I've just come off my Africa Twin Adventure Sport with a massive frontal area, it doesn't feel too dissimilar. So the aim of today is to do all sorts of riding. We're going to ride some country lanes. We're obviously going through villages at the moment. We're avoiding vans going head on. And uh, yeah, we're just going to have a little bit of fun. We're going to have a walk round and then we're going to attempt some off-roading. Nothing gnarly, nothing crazy, just a little bit of ADV riding to see how this bike handles when I'm standing up, what it feels like, so we can get a comparison sitting down and standing up and doing it over the things it's designed to do, which is a little bit of everything. That's what an ADV bike is for, you see. If you've got a 21-inch front wheel and you don't go off-road, then there's something wrong with you. So these little country lanes really test the suspension, the handling, and how you feel on a bike on kind of not the best roads let's put it that way but these are the roads i like when i come out riding i don't head for the <laughs> <shit. laughs> as i was saying when i come out riding i don't head for the big open sweepers super fast lanes i like riding and exploring the countryside so this bike is right up my street Again, if you are new to the channel, you won't know this, but I've had three Africa Twins, and I currently own an Adventure Sport Africa Twin, DCT, and also a CRF 250 Rally that I use for green lane in. I've currently got in the garage from Honda UK, I've got the Honda Hornet, which has the same engine as this but it weirdly feels different. I don't know if it's a different state of tune or if it's exactly the same, but obviously it's gonna feel slightly different because of the way the ergonomics are and the weight of the bike and the riding position. The Hornet feels definitely more sporty. So let's get the ergonomics out of the way while we're here on this glorious sunny day now. The rain has finished, go away. Don't ever come back again. I don't wanna see you until at least September. So the uh, bars to pegs to seat ratio is very nice. A little bit small for me. I would like it higher in the seat, higher in the bars. But I am tall, you see, and we do have long legs. Not we, me. As I said in the beginning of this uh, little video. So I would like it a little bit higher. Maybe you can get a bench seat for this. I don't know. Maybe it's a future accessory. 
again I'll show you the seat when we do the walk around but the actual triangle is nice for everyday riding the bars are a really nice width apart it makes it very maneuverable you can throw it from side to side really easily it carries its weight quite nicely the seat is actually surprisingly comfortable considering it's brand new when I get on most new bikes the seat is quite firm but this isn't too bad at all now as you don't know the Trans Out has been around for many many years and it was discontinued and now it's been reinvented kind of like a modern retro I suppose a little bit like what Fiat do with the Fiat 500 it's a modern take on an old classic adventure bike one of the original adventure bikes one of the original ADVs I think it came out in 600 originally then 650 and then 700 when it was discontinued and as I said I've been really really looking forward to this because I'm an ADV fan being tall being a big guy these are the kind of bikes I actually fit on and being comfortable is a massive bonus when it comes to riding especially when you've got the injuries I've got <laughs> you need pure comfort right we're going to take it down this road again if you've been on these videos before you'll know I take bikes down this road because it's very bumpy and it does test the suspension so we'll see how this one does and then at the end of this road we're turning to Box Hill we'll have a walk round and then I'll go and find a little bit of off-roading for you guys Breathe in. When you get her up spinning, she's pretty good. She's decent. She's got a good turn of pace. This is a lot of fun. Track control just kicking in now. Yeah, this 750 parallel twin, an half pack a punch, it's surprising. It's one of those engines that is pleasantly surprising. It's got a bit of low down torque, but it's got some punch up top as well. Or well, mid-range, I should say. Mid-range to top, I know what I'm talking about, trust me. <laughs> no, it's good. And this is in standard mode. I've not got it in sport mode. I've ridden the Hornet in sport mode and standard mode and that engine is one of the peaches of the Hornet and I'm going to say that now, early doors, it is the peach of this, this engine, I'm a massive fan already, I really like it, I'm a big fan and this, I think it's a 270 degree crank, gives it a nice sound, a nice deep sound, even with the standard exhaust and a nice blip on the downshift, oh she sounds lovely, right let's go and do a little bit of a walk round so here we are back of Rikers Box Hill car park we're doing another one we've got a first impressions ride of this the brand new Honda Transalp 750 parallel twin midway ADV bike I didn't know what I was going to think of it when I saw it in the pictures but I like it there's one thing I don't like but I'll tell you that when we go around the bike but all in all it's a good looking bike leave your comments downstairs in the descriptions box let me know what you think of the look of this bike it comes in this white a gray and a black color as well but that doesn't really matter because we've only got the white one and to me this is the best color anyway especially with the gold rims but what we should do is switch cameras and we'll go for a little bit of a walk round <laughs>
So let's start at the front and work our way round. At the front, you've got a 21-inch front wheel, a 90-90-21. And these tyres are Metzler's Carew Streets. So that says the off-road capabilities of those. And it's got a 21-inch front wheel, which means it's destined for off-road. So ditch those tyres if you're going off-road and put some proper ones on and go and have some fun. It's got gold rims. They are tubed, I would say, just looking at them. The front and the rear looked very much like they're tubed tyres. You've got a twin disc on the front, ABS front and rear with Nissan calipers. And then you move up to the forks, which are black. I'm not sure what style these are, whether they're adjustable. They don't look adjustable. No, they're not. There you go. Non-adjustable front upside down forks. Yes, definitely upside down. Or are these now the normal way up and the other ones are upside down? Who knows? Anyway, moving on, you've got the radiator there. Obviously a water-cooled 750cc parallel twin with the twin pipes coming out there. And they're colouring up nicely. And that's the engine there. As I said, parallel twin. I think it's 755cc and a 270 crank, which does give it a nice sound, even with the standard exhaust, it sounds pretty good. On this side, you've got the standard squidgy rubber foot pad there, but if you take it off, you can see under there, it's got some teeth, so if you want to do some off-roading, take that off, and it give you a bit more grip. And then you've got the brake lever there, again, with teeth on it to give you a little bit more grip off-road. Moving back, you've got the rear pillion peg, which is just your standard metal one with a little bit of grip on there. And then you've got the grab rails up here. I'm not sure if this is part of it. I assume this is part of the bike when you get it because it's on this one. And he did say this has got no accessories on it. But I will come back to the accessories in a minute. So you've got grab rails there and pillion peg there. And your pillion seat is, is pretty decent size and it's quite squidgy. So should be all right. Put a back box on there and should be pretty comfortable. Back here you've got the exhaust, which is exactly the same as the one on the Hornet, it seems. So it sounds good, but this is the problem I've got with it. That exhaust should be up there. Shouldn't be down there. It should be up there. This is an ADV bike, so you need all the clearance you can get, and you don't want to be dipping that into puddles. So if there's an aftermarket one and it's slightly higher, I'd go for that. If you are going to ride it on the road and just gravel tracks, that won't be a problem at all. But if you are going to take it a bit more off-road and a bit more into dips and crevices and more mud and water, then that should be, in my opinion, a little bit higher. On the back here, again, gold rim, single disc ABS, Nissan caliper, and this one is a 150 70 18. So you've got a 21 18 split on this bike, which is proper off road. And if you come around this side, it's just chain driven. Again, pillion foot peg there. And on this side, you've got a gear shift, which is a six speed gearbox. And then, you, of course, you've got the squidgy there, which you can take off. This one doesn't have a quick shifter. The Hornet I've got at the moment does have a quick shifter, which is the same engine. So I will assume you can get one for this. Don't quote me on that. I'm just using an assumption, and we all know what assumption is. So if you can get a quick shifter, I would, because I quite like it on the Hornet. It's a nice piece of kit. It has got a side stand. This one does not have a center stand so i'm assuming again that's an aftermarket part on an adventure bike i'd always get a center stand because you want to do your maintenance while you're out and about you see you shouldn't have to but you never know when you've got to fix a puncture or just do some chain maintenance that sort of thing when you're out having an adventure so a center stand does come in handy Right, talking of accessories, Ian in the shop told me that they're doing something a little bit different with this Honda. Honda in the past have employed companies to make the accessories for them. So the fitting times have been stupid and you're paying through the nose to fit other people's items that are branded as Honda. But Honda on this one have said they're doing the aftermarket parts specifically for this bike so it should half the fitting time or even less than that than the ones they've got at the moment on the other bikes, i.e. the Africa Twin. And let's face it, adventure bikes, they tend to have accessories thrown at them, especially luggage. So it'll be interesting to see what the luggage is like for this and also what the aftermarket luggage from other companies is gonna look like as well. Right, so let's have a quick look at the lights. On the front, you've got that four light LED system that they have on the Hornet. I think they've got it on the CBs as well and LED indicators. They stay on when you're not using them as DRLs and then uh, flash when you want to use them. 
On the bike, again, the standard LED brake and tail light with the indicators that flash. This is the standard backlights they seem to use on all their range at the moment, so no different there. But the advantage of having one system for all bikes is if you do need the parts, it shouldn't be a problem getting hold of them. And there you go, that's the dash. I was just trying to duck out the way then because uh, when it's black, all you can see is my face in it. And no one needs to see that, do they? All right, let's have a little bit of a run through of the dash. You've got here rev counter, you've got speed, you've got fuel, you've got in standard mode here, you've got different modes. I'll go through those in a minute. You've got power, engine braking, trash control, ABS on because it's on road. There is a gravel mode to this, I'll show you in a minute, and that turns the ABS off on the rear. You've got trips down here, so you've got trip A, trip B consumption, trip B average consumption, and voltage. They change a little bit as well. You've got a little side stand thing up there telling you your side stand's down, oil temperature, and there's your temperature. Your clock up there, little lights around the outside, neutral, trash control, ABS, and uh, let's turn it off and on again. You've got a hiss one there, and you've got your engine management light there that goes off, indicators, and your full beam light there. So if you come over to your left handlebar, you've got modes and function here. Now press in the mode button, which is this one here. That changes standard to rain, gravel, and as you can see, the ABS is now turned off. And then user, so you can customize it to what you want. And then you've got sport, which is the most sporty, funny enough. Oh, I'm full of wisdom. And then if you use this one left and right, that just changes the bottom information down there. So you've got number one, number two, number three, and number four. And you just hold it down to reset. I'm not going to do that at the moment because I just want to leave it as it is. And the average consumption at the moment is 58.1 miles per gallon, which is averaged in 198 miles. Left handlebar, you've got your clutch here, which is non-adjustable. And on the switch gear here, again, you've got the mode, the function, the little joystick here. You've got your hooter. You've got your indicators down here, your hazard light there, your full beams, and your full beams stay on. So you, that's your flasher, and that's if you want it to stay on. And on the right-hand side, you've got your throttle, you've got your kill switch, which is also your starter, and you've got your front brake lever, which is adjustable with this little dial here. So I think that's about it for the walk round, all the information. Again, if you've got a question, drop that down in the comment section. I'll see what I can find out for you or give Dobles a call. Again, I shall leave their website downstairs in the descriptions box. Right, so we've got the other camera turned off now because I need both hands for this. So we'll have a little look under the seat. And that's what we've got under the seat. Absolutely no room whatsoever. You might get a small sandwich in there, but only if you use thin bread. Maybe a pitter. You've got a little tool kit. You've got all your connections here. Your fuses there, your battery there. You've got coolant there. And that's about it for under the seat. All right, let's put that back. Wow, first time. That's unusual for me. First time, nice and easy. I like that. Not that you're ever gonna take the seat off because there's no room under there unless you're really hungry for that slim sandwich. I forgot to say before we did the walk round about the suspension on that bumpy road. It felt really, really good. It was really composed over those bumpy little gravelly lanes. I was very impressed, which is what you want from an adventure bike. It's a good compromise between giving you feedback and letting you know what the road's doing and being soft enough to soak up the bumps. It's a nice, happy medium. I like it. I think the tank on this is only about 16 litres or just over 16 litres. So in my opinion, and again it's just my opinion, I'd like to see a version of this with a bigger tank. More of a long distance tourer as well. A bit like they do with the Africa Twin. Do an adventure sport version of this. I don't know what I was expecting from this bike, but it wasn't this. I had this weird notion in my brain that it was going to be absolutely rubbish. I don't know why, but I did. I think because I looked at it in the pictures and I thought that's a little bit safe. They played a little bit safe with this. And at that point I hadn't ridden the Hornet so I didn't know anything about this engine. I just knew 750 parallel twin, it's called a trans out, looks a bit retro, exhaust is in a weird place. Don't know what I feel about that. But having ridden it today, 
This is a good contender for the middleweight adventure market. A really, really good contender. I think if you're gnarly and do more off-road and want to do pure off-road, you're still going to go for the Yamaha, the Tenere. But if you want a happy compromise, this is a good, good bike. And we shall see when we get up here what it's like off-road. What it's like when I stand up. I mean, sitting here cruising through villages, just sitting in fifth gear around 30 miles an hour, it's really smooth. It's really well balanced. It's really comfortable. It's a good bike. This engine's lovely. It's got enough character to keep you entertained. It's got a little bit of vibe to it, a little bit of a thump to it. That crank positioning gives it a nice bit of character, which is lacking from a lot of modern bikes. But this has it. It's quite torquey low down, and it's got a little bit of oomph around the mid and up. Right, so here we are, a little bit of off-road. Let's change the mode here. We're going to go gravel. ABS is off on the rear. We're down two segments on the power. Full engine braking and uh, traction control is uh, it's on one. So I don't know if you can turn trash control off fully. You might be able to do that in user, but we're just going to use gravel mode for now. Should be dry enough, should be okay. All right, shover in second, stand up. Oh, it does spin, but it does cut out as well. You definitely want to turn the rear traction control off. But suspension's doing a good job of soaking this up. It is unnerving when that traction control does kick in though. Again, standing up, I'd like the bars a little bit further forward and a little bit higher, but we'll be able to adjust those. We'll be able to get some aftermarket parts, I'm pretty sure. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a little bit of a trek. We're going to go up this lane, all the way to the end. It's quite a nice lane, especially for an ADV bike or one that's on uh, semi-road tyres. I mean, they do say Carew Street, so that gives the game away, doesn't it? But hopefully we'll have some fun. Good news is, is when you turn the bike off and then back on again, it's in the same mode that you left it in. So that's good news. Some revert back to standard. Right, so if we go user mode, hold the button down mode. There we go, power. We don't want that. We want traction. Ah, don't know if you can see that. It won't let me turn traction off, so that's a shame. So we put it back in gravel, and then we go for that. And then once we've done this lane, we hit the roads again, and I give you my conclusion on the way back. So we shove it in second. I'm a little bit over the front with the handlebars being so low and far back. But it's not the end of the world. If you are shorter than me, obviously it'd be perfect. Oh, you can feel that trash control kicking in. If you're gentle with the throttle, it's not too bad. But if you do give it a handful, you hear it kicking in and it kind of slows the bike so you've got to be ready for it but balance wise it's really nice it's really easy to maneuver I've got to remember I'm not on off-road tires <laughs> it feels very light I mean I've just come off my Africa Twin Adventure Sport so it would do but it feels very nimble and easy to maneuver via the foot pegs. Yeah, it's a bit rocking horse in sand. <laughs> a bit buckaroo with that trash control. Shover in third, see if that makes any difference. Oh, it's very, very soft.
more sand. A few rocks. A little bit rutty. Actually feels really, really nice. Again, a little bit low, but its handling is sublime. I've got to say, I really enjoyed that. I really did. The suspension soaked that up nicely. As I said, not a gnarly lane, but it's a kind of lane you take an adventure bike on. Come and get out of the road, you don't want to get your run over badge. Considering it's standard suspension, straight out of the box, it handled that really nicely. It felt very composed, sure-footed. All right, let's put her back into standard. The only downside is that trash control. Hopefully there is a way of turning it off. I just couldn't figure it out, out and about. If you do know how to turn it off, drop a comment downstairs in the comment section to help people out. Because if I could have turned that off, I could have slid this bike all over the place and it would have been immense fun. I forgot to mention earlier as well, the brakes. The brakes are pretty good. They've got good feedback through the front. It's got a nice feel through the lever. And the back's pretty good as well, especially off-road. You need a, quite a good back brake because you control it a lot with the back brake off-road. And it felt really nice underfoot. Let's go sport. There we go, sport mode. Let's see what this is all about. It's certainly got a bit more pickup. It's livelier in the throttle. Tell you what, you wouldn't think this thing has got a 21 inch front wheel. A little bit of front liftage. Also within the trash control it's got anti-wheelie as well built in. Just so you know. My god this is good fun. Right, let's take this bike back to the shop before I kidnap this bike for good. And that kind of tells you where I am with this bike, whether I would or would not buy it. 100% I would buy this bike. I think this is my new favourite bike. Obviously, it's not as good as my Africa Twin Adventure Sport. That is the best adventure bike in the world. But if I was downsizing, or if I wanted a smaller, more manageable adventure bike, I think about this. I really would think about this. If I was doing a round the world trip, this would be high on my list. The only downside will be the tank size. It's only a 16 litre tank. If it had a bigger tank, higher exhaust, and I could definitely turn that trash control off, we'd be quids in. So all in all, the summary of this bike is absolutely spot on with a couple of niggles. And that's it. I'm nitpicking. Once again, thank you very much to Doble's Motorcycles down in Causton. If you are down there, go and see Ian, the general manager. Give him a huge hug from me. I shall leave a link to their website downstairs in the description box. Check that out. I shall leave a link to all my social media down there as well. My Twitter, my Instagram, my Facebook, my website, that sort of thing. So go and check those out. Go and follow me on all of those. It's completely free and you get more of this nonsense. So that just leaves me to end the video right here, right now. Thank you very much for watching. Really appreciate it from myself, Mr. Fish, and the Honda Trans Alp 750. I bid you farewell. Don't forget to subscribe, to like, to share, to do all those things that you need to do. Also hit that notification bell so you guys can get the drop on these videos. I shall see you on the next one. You know I love you all. Stay safe. Fish out. Get all your bags. Get out my house. I don't want your
stuff around I never did you wrong, but you did me wrong So go ahead, get, get gone. gone Get all your bags, get out my house I don't want your stuff around I never did you wrong, but you did me wrong So go ahead and get